One of the big hits in my family for about 25 or 30 years has been a recipe that my sister found when she was living in Nashville. And up until then, my mother had always done banana bread a specific way and it was very good. But the minute my sister found this recipe, it became the family favorite. My mother started making it this way. We all started making it this way. And I wanted to make some for a friend of mine because it's the holidays. And so I thought, well, if I'm gonna make it anyway, then we might as well put it on video because you might wanna try it yourself. I guarantee this is gonna be a big hit. It's great for brunch. If you have um, people over and they're staying over and you wanna serve it with a late breakfast or lunch, it's a wonderful dessert. It's great as part of a little dessert buffet or with coffee or tea. So there's a million ways to do it. It's a little more cake than bread, even though it's called bread, just to let you know, but it's pretty easy. I haven't done it in a long time, so we'll see how it goes. I probably should have done a test run. I'm trying to think of how long it's been since I've made this. No memory, over a year, at least over a year. But hey, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I think I have everything that I need and a really big bowl because I'm gonna double the recipe. The original recipe was supposed to make two loaves, but they were small. So I double it and then it's two big loaves and then it's awesome. So, and by the way, we'll obviously post this figure out so you can see it as well. So I melted the butter. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I did because then it just mixes much more easily. So this is a cup of butter because I'm doubling the recipe. Wait, I'm gonna put that out of camera over there. Very, very simple. Then I'm going to do because you know this is oh so healthy and reasonable. Did I mention that nothing has calories on Christmas? It's like a birthday, but you know. Um, so I'm going to do two cups of sugar because I'm doubling the recipe. Don't panic, it's a dessert. It's supposed to be lots of sugar. Um, all right. Yep, I always double check because I have a tendency. I have ADD, so I'll start doubling a recipe and then halfway through I'll realize that I forgot to double, I don't know how many ingredients. So now every time I'm double checking to make sure I did it right. That was two cups of sugar. Okay, right now it's just butter and sugar and a lot of both. Um, I'm gonna put some eggs in. Normally it is four for a double recipe. See if I can do this part right because I have a tendency to zone out and miscount. ADD table for one. I always joked that um, I had my mom's OCD, so I need everything to be perfectly in its place. But I have my dad's ADD, so I can't focus long enough to make it happen. So I just make myself crazy. All good. Okay, so eggs. Now, here's one of the interesting things is mashing the bananas. And I have a whole technique for this, but I'm going to do that a little later because I want to use this for sifting the flour in a bit. Okay, I'm gonna come back to the mashed bananas. Um, vanilla, teaspoon vanilla. Got it, all right. You can tell where I shop. Do you have enough vanilla? Yeah, for a lifetime, pretty much. I can tell this is new. Okay. So, a teaspoon of vanilla, which makes everything taste better. Okay. I have to say that the little vanilla things are a little easier to work with. All right. A few extra drops of vanilla. All right, um, sour cream, a cup of sour cream. I know it's a little weird. Okay, some people think it's weird to put sour cream in banana bread, but it's really good. Um, you don't taste it, nothing like that, but it definitely really makes a difference in the way it tastes. So I am going to Do it this way. By the way, when I'm doing this banana bread, I know that if you want to try to make it 
lower fat, then you can probably try substituting things. But I think in all honesty, there just comes a point where it's like, it's a dessert. Do you want a dessert? Make a dessert. Um, I think in a lot of cases trying to, I don't know, trying to make it less just makes me eat more and not enjoy it as much. So I'm not going to substitute. I'm going to get a full fat sour cream and I'm going to use real butter and I'm just going to, um, you know, make sure that it's not every day and uh, do some extra cardio. So that'll be good. All right. Put that over there. So one cup of sour cream. I keep checking because I keep doing this wrong. It's been so long since I've done this. Yep. Okay. All right. Not a very cooperative spatula. Of course, I have to get every last bit of it in there. All right. So I'll put that there for right now. Then we have the two cups sifted flour. So this might be, I don't know if this is a normal way to sift flour or not. And I realize that a lot of flour today is pre-sifted, but I just kind of have to do it the way that I grew up doing it. All right, I'm gonna grab some flour, back with the flour. So this is good because I can use up what's in here. I always hate having a little bit of something left. What is it with me and throwing things away? Oh, gosh, you'd think I was, I don't know. I remember my grandmother was um, my dad's mom and dad lived near us when we were little. And, you know, she was very much, she was around during the depression and she saved every little thing. I would go up into her attic and there would be boxes that were all very neatly organized. She was German. She was raised by a couple of German aunts. And um, it would just be boxes of containers that food had come in and rubber bands and things like that. She threw away nothing, nothing, nothing. Very frugal. Such a sweet, sweet lady. My grandpa was really sweet, but kind of gruff. And she was just the kindest, most wonderful, gentlewoman in the world. Emma, her name was Emma. Okay, so this is how I sift flour. Is this right? I don't know. Just kind of how I grew up doing it, so that's what I keep doing. No reason to change, it works fine. Okay, I think I'm about there, so. And that's why you wear machine washable. You get this. Let me see where we are. Yeah, that's about right. I'll put this in. Yep. So that's half of it. And I have two more cups. Because again, I'm doubling the recipe. And you would not believe, I'm telling you, I had to, so, okay, here's a little confession time. Um, so I, I started to do the recipe and I completely miscounted the eggs. Then I had to go borrow eggs from my neighbor and start the recipe all over again because I just can't focus and keep a train of thought. I don't know what's up with that. I'm going to blame it on being creative and left-handed, but it could just be a lack of discipline. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's probably genetic. I will admit that it's definitely a trait of my dad's. Very creative, very absent-minded, very smart. Not always linear. All right, so it's two cups per recipe. I got a little extra. So I'm gonna put some of this back down here. Yep, okay. So that's four cups of flour. All good there. Then, I'll put that in the sink because I won't need that anymore. Then I'll take the flour and do this. All the rest goes back in. See? It works. 
All right, flowers done. Where are we now? Then it's gonna be one teaspoon baking powder. So I'm gonna do two. Oh, I got some new baking powder. Baking powder, you know, if you, if you don't cook, if you don't bake a lot, they should make smaller things of baking powder because it could take you a lifetime to use all the baking powder. So one teaspoon, two teaspoons, Keep checking. All right, baking powder, half teaspoon salt. Oh, I forgot to grab the salt. This is a Greek salt that a friend of mine gave me. I really like it. So half teaspoon salt, which is one teaspoon. Isn't it amazing how salt makes dessert taste better? Sweet and salty, all good. All right, got the salt and then one teaspoon soda which means two teaspoons soda. Luckily, we're gonna write all this down for you. You don't have to keep track of my ramblings. I know that would be a challenge. Okay, got it. All right, now this is ready for the mashed bananas. I almost forgot the bananas in the banana bread. You know what's important for a banana bread? Bananas, yeah. Um, so in a lot of banana bread, in the banana bread that my mom made, when I was growing up, oh, let me grab a knife. It was, thank you. She would always, when I was growing up and my mother made banana bread, she would always wait for the bananas to age. Did your mom do that? And so she would buy bananas and buy them in advance and then you know wait for them to turn brown and then those were the bananas for the banana bread. I don't know if your mom did that, but that was, and that was how the recipe had to be done that she made when we were growing up. And then one of the great things about this recipe is that you don't have to wait for the bananas to age. I think it's one of the reasons why my mom liked it um, as well. I think one of the reasons we like it is because it has a crust of sugar, which I haven't made yet, but it has a crust of sugar, which, you know, let's face it, isn't gonna be a bad thing. So then, do this, mash it down, and just mash them, mash them, mash them. All right. I'm going to need how many things of bananas? Oh, yeah. Okay. Halfway there. I need two cups mashed bananas for a double recipe. Ta da! You know, this is also cathartic. If you're having a bad day, if you're upset with someone, mash some bananas. All right, that was two and I'm about halfway there. So I'm gonna grab two more. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those extra bananas. I don't dislike bananas, but for some reason I just don't think to eat them. Why is that? Isn't that weird? I don't know. Go figure. All right, take this out, put it right there. One more. I wasn't sure when I was doing this if I should prep everything beforehand and then just put it together. And then I thought, well, then that would be a two second <laughs> video. You know, a happy medium might've been, might've been a good idea. All right, so there's the bananas. I think that's my last thing. I don't know how I would mash these if I didn't have this little mashing tool. I'm trying to remember how my mom mashed the bananas when I was growing up. I don't remember. My mom was such an amazing cook. She would make um, fresh bread every week, 12 loaves of fresh bread. From scratch, no bread maker, every week. The dough was like this. I remember she would have it on the counter. She would just throw flour all over the counter, this huge thing of dough, and she'd be kneading the dough like this. Oh, no wonder she was in such good shape. Okay. We are good. I'm gonna put that there for right now. So I can use this. Yep. Just in case you're wondering, um, two bananas is about a cup. I can never remember that, so I seem to learn it anew every time I make banana bread. So now you're just gonna mix it up. Got it all in here. I'm gonna double check everything. Butter, sugar, eggs, banana, vanilla, sour cream, flour, baking powder, Salt soda. We put all that in, right? Okay. Um, 
if you're going to cook with me, you're going to have to keep track of things. So that's just the way it goes. I'm not really, I love to cook, but I'm not really very good at it. But up until this last year, I never had time to cook. I mean, if you couldn't eat it while you were walking, it was not going to get eaten. I surely did not have time to cook anything. So I've enjoyed, see, just got flour on me. Machine washable, machine washable. And you see why with all this sugar and everything, it's kind of more of a cross between cake. It's almost if coffee cake were banana bread. Does that make any sense? It's kind of, kind of what it's like. I'm so getting this all over me. Should've worn an apron. it's all in all right just gonna make sure it's all all the way down to the bottom I can hear the sugar on the sides that's very funny all right yeah I think that's all good deal all right so all mixed up good to go and then living dangerously people living dangerously all right got that done okay so this is going to be the main banana bread which is awesome so now i'm going to make the crust i'm going to get this out of the way give me just a second okay now one of the things that's interesting about this is that the bread is one thing and then there's this kind of sugary crust that you make which makes anything better let's be honest so I'm going to do about a cup and a half of sugar all right okay I'm eyeballing it that looks about right, all right. and then about, oh, cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Cinnamon I have plenty of. I have to quit shopping in big bulk stores when it's just me. <laughs> cinnamon for a lifetime, all right. So that's gonna be about, I'm gonna do about one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, again doesn't have to be horribly precise on this one. Then I'm going to put this up here, this up here. And I'm going to chop some pecans. So I'm going to need about a cup and a half. Oh, I need a big knife of pecans. Big bulk, live by myself. <laughs> Not a good idea. All right, so chopped pecans. Pecans are, they're part of the crust and they're really, really good. So I'm gonna measure, ballpark it before I chop. So I'll know how many to chop. Close enough, all right. Here. Okay, so obviously if you're gonna, one of the things that makes this a lot easier is if you buy the pecans already chopped and especially if you do the really small, the chopped pecans or, you know, sometimes they're in half, but you're gonna need them chopped smaller. So try to buy them already chopped smaller because you want them to be pretty small. I'm sure that anyone with correct <laughs> knife skills is freaking out right now. Don't panic. Famous last words. As soon as I say that, something will happen. So I'm not going to say that. Feel free to panic. 
as soon as this is over, then we'll stop panicking. It'll be okay. My mother did used to bake. Um, oh, this reminds me of her pecan pie. I swear. I know you hear people say this and you think it's a cliche, but my mom made the best pies. I just, I wish I could do pies like she did. She did the crust from scratch. So good. I always use the store-bought pre-made. It's good, not as good. You get the idea. All right. There are a lot of nuts here. I feel like this is more than I usually use in the nut department. So I might not put them all in at once. It kind of makes me nervous. Luckily, this is the crust, so it's not going to affect the banana bread itself, which is good. Okay. So I'm just finishing. I'm getting it pretty small because I think it's better. Okay. Now, I am going to... my favorite little cooking doohickeys. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this up. Let's see how it looks, get an idea. Hmm. Do I need more nuts? Yeah. I think that'll be fine. Okay, breaking up the little, why are there little lumps in the sugar? Okay, breaking those up. Boy, they just come out of nowhere, don't they? Okay. We'll put that up here, out of the way. Now, so I made the bread and I made the crust. And now I'm going to take two of the bread pans. I already have the oven preheating, by the way. I'm going to use vegetable oil to oil the pans. Uh, parchment paper is also a great idea, but I thought I had some and I don't. So uh, vegetable oil works really well. That's what my mom always used when I was growing up. So we'll just go back to that because you don't want it to stick. You know, it's going to, with the eggs and the sugar, it has a tendency to stick a little bit. So, whoops. Well, that was a little generous. <laughs> Would you like a little bread with your oil? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna throw this away, it's full of oil. So I have the pans oiled. Once again, you could use parchment paper if you wanna use a little less oil. Then I'm gonna take this mixture, which is the sugar and the cinnamon and the nuts, and I'm just gonna start spooning it, one spoon in each at a time. Obviously more than one total. Just distributing it till it's a nice bed. And then if you want to distribute evenly, just shake it. Perfect. So I just want to make sure that I have exactly the same in each one. Now the original recipe called for only putting this on the bottom, but I like to put a little on the top too because why not? <laughs> Why not? If some is good, more is better. Then I'm going to put the banana bread in. I'm going to try to get them even. Okay. Oops. Got a little on the side. I'm such a neat cook, as you can tell. All right. Here you go. All right. Let's see if I should put a little bit more. 
And that one. Hmm. A little bit more. A little bit more for Santa Claus. A little bit more for Santa Claus. All right. I do have to get every last bit of it out of the bowl. OCD. Table for one. Okay. Bring this here. I got it on the counter. I didn't quite make it over to the other one. Oops. Okay. So, got that pretty much done. Now I'm going to take some of what's left. And if you don't use all of it, all of it, I know I'm going to be making more pretty soon because it's the holidays. So I'll put it in the refrigerator and use it next time. So I'm just going to sprinkle, try to get along the edges because when you sprinkle it all naturally goes in the center. Around the edge, around the edge. This is so good when it's done. By the way, you don't have to be as liberal with the sugar mixture as I am, but you know, I always do tend to go a little bit overboard on the sugar. So now I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees. Uh, usually the recipe says 45 minutes. I'll check it in 45 minutes. Usually it's more like an hour. When it comes out, it's going to be so good. So while it's in the oven, I'll clean up and then we'll take a look at it when it comes out. Okay, so the alarm just went off for the oven and I am going to take one out, put it here, take one out, put it here. Obviously, the way that you can tell it's done is to take a knife, put it down in, comes out pretty clean, it's all done. And you know what, with this, if it's not quite clean, it's still good. So I know it's done, and now, just to make sure it doesn't stick, I always do this. Take the knife and just cut around the sides as close to the pan as possible. Because if it doesn't come out, it's going to be kind of hard to eat. All right, this is hot. I was just, so, you know, Katie, my assistant, I was just joking with her that I could never do a live cooking show because for some reason, I find this completely discombobulating, even though I've been on camera for decades. It's very funny, but cooking on camera is different for some reason. All right, you ready? Brace yourself. Please come out. Yay! And it came out. Okay. I'm a little I'm a little ecstatic about that. <laughs> so what you see is it has this amazing crust on top and it really is that cross between a bread and a cake. Um, you can turn it over if you like. I just tend to kind of serve it as is, completely up to you. But if you it's very crumbly. I'm gonna get a small plate. Hold on a moment. All right. Okay. It's really good when it's hot. If you eat it when it's just out of the oven. And then, I know it's overkill, and I don't care. Butter on the bread. You know why? Because butter makes everything better. I'm majorly, I am such a butter girl, it's hysterical. And you can tell my niece takes after me. When she was little, you would hand her a roll just with butter, and she would take the roll, gnaw off the butter, and just hand you back the roll. All right. so. Now you can see the butter is kind of melty. It's so good. I'm going to try it. Mm. 
that's holiday. I guarantee your family will love this. If you make this for an easy dessert that people can just eat, if you make this for breakfast or for brunch, guarantee they're going to love it. It's great when it's not hot. It's awesome when it's hot. It's banana brunch bread. It is pretty easy or I would not be capable of doing it. And if you try it, you have to let me know how it goes.